everybody, this is Talking Jobs with me, Rachel Brumnick, and today our podcast is on getting into clinical psychology. And I'm delighted to welcome Dr. Dave Dawson. Say hi, Dave. Hello, Dave. Oh, you funny guy. <laughs> okay, Dave is one of our finest graduates from Lincoln, and uh, what have you been doing then, Dave, since graduation? Okay, so I graduated back in 2001. Wow. I know, a long time, right? Um, after that, I was lucky enough to get a assistant psychologist post okay. for a couple of years. All right. In Lincoln, was that? In... It was in Lincoln, yeah. yeah. In Lincolnshire Partnership Trust locally. Um, great service. Okay. And from there, I went on to train and qualified as a clinical psychologist in 2007. Wow. Wow, you're such a role model. I know, I've been hard at the cold face ever since. Yeah, yeah. And so more recently, you've been working back at the university because you work on the Trent programme yes. for clinical training. Exactly, yes. And now we train clinical psychologists for the NHS. OK, fantastic. So let me just see if I've got this right. So if somebody wants to get into clinical, they need to do their first degree has to be recognised by the British Psychological Society. Absolutely. Or um, do a the conversion. conversion, yes. right. And then people will typically get one or two years experience working. So our criteria uh, looks for a minimum of twelve months. Okay. Um, there has been talk about lowering that um, oh, right, actually, okay. so we can we can pick up fresh talent as okay. it was straight from university. Um, that twelve months we're fairly liberal on, um, so that twelve months can be gained. Um, prior to your degree, it can be gained oh, okay. when you're um, working on your degree, that, right. but it does have to be around about 12 months full-time at the point um, of appointment. Right, okay. Um, but I think people get a little bit hung up on this. We're not necessarily looking for um, previous work as an assistant psychologist, which used to be the kind yeah, of... Yeah, creme de la creme. Exactly, and the, the kind of gold standard route into training. But now really we're looking for aptitude, uh, right, okay. um, and that can be you know the general caring profession, profession so... Um, care work, um, you know, th those kind of things, but also the research route because, okay. you know, we're training scientist practitioners at the end of the day. Right. Um, so research is, is completely relevant also. So when they start the doctoral program, it is a postgraduate research degree. Exactly, yeah, it's it's PGR. Um, so essentially you have various assignments throughout, um, throughout the training with us, starting with a protocol that becomes your thesis in your okay. third year. Um, and we also ask trainees to um, undertake systematic literature reviews. Right. We have a really good record of those being published, actually. Um, and there's assignments and essays, as, as you would expect, uh, running through to your thesis in the third year, um, but alongside which trainees are generally on placement for three days a week as well. Right, OK. Um, so it's almost like a part-time PhD condensed into three years. All right, so OK. Quite, quite, um, quite, a, quite um, demanding course. It's very demanding, yeah. And very, um, yeah, very competitive, I think. Right, so people know that it's uh, competitive. So what sort of tips would you give somebody who is mm. looking to sort of take their career in that direction? Let's say somebody might be listening today who's first, second, third year undergraduate. Yeah. Um, for us, actually, we've moved towards a, um, a two-stage selection process. Oh, um, right. So the first stage now involves a, a written uh, task. Okay. And what we're actually looking for there is really... Um, candidates' abilities to critique right. information okay. and to then convey that information back to us. Right. Now that sounds really simple, but actually we're, we are losing a lot of candidates at that stage. Okay. So in fact, if candidates can get through that stage, they have a right. very, very good chance of being interviewed. Right. With us. Okay. Um, we then will, um, those candidates that get through that process, will then look at their application form to make sure they meet the minimum criteria. Right. But actually, it's it's a real kind of um, field leveler um, right, okay. because if you can get through that test, you've got you've got a good chance of uh, getting through. Right. Okay. Do you think some people would find that I don't know maybe surprising because I, I don't know if you would ask a student, but maybe if you'd ask the general public, what would you want from a clinical psychologist? They might say, oh, I don't know, some of those Rogerian type oh, skills absolutely, or absolutely, like yes. empathy and. Yes. Was, Compassion. Compassion, or... absolutely. We need all of those things. Um, and this is why it's just part one of the selection right, process. Okay. What we find is generally it's quite difficult if people don't have those kind of, th th those ways of thinking about problems from a psychological perspective. Right. By the time they finish their degree, it's quite difficult to then shape that up afterwards oh, okay. in training. Okay. So what we're looking for is really, obviously we don't want people who are already 
operating at you know the highest level. It's a training yeah, program. Yeah, yeah. We expect them to come in, um, and we take a developmental view of that. But we need that those people that can apply psychological perspective to to people, right. um, and and to critique information, not just take information as right. it is, but think about why is this information stated in these kind of ways? What's the problem with this information? And getting in the nooks and crannies and thinking about things in a, in a different kind of way. They then go on to stage two of the selection okay. process, which... Uh, we'll More start... interview-based. Or... Exactly. So we have, um, I think, four tasks. So we have a group exercise um, where um, the candidates have to get together in a group, and that's observed. Right. So we're looking for those kind of interactive skills there. We then have a academic panel, uh, which will look um, largely at how candidates can apply psychological theory to human behaviour. Okay. We then have a clinical panel which looks at how you might do that in a clinical context right. but checking those soft skills as well like the Rogerian yeah, skills yeah. and listening and empathy uh, that you spoke about uh, and also there's a personal panel where we check um, kind of candidates resilience and okay. reflective abilities okay. and those kind of things so it's quite a long, yeah, a long yeah. process um, but of course once I think once you get through to the um, second stage you have roughly a one in three one in four chance of being right, selected okay. so actually the odds are pretty good at that point right okay so when people applied for their undergraduate they might have looked at sort of league tables mm -hmm. or the city center or certain undergraduate programs mm. might specialize in face recognition or yes. forensic psychology or something like that so there are different providers of mm. The training program, program isn't there? I mean, obviously, we want good people to come yeah. uh, to Trent. Um, so, are there differences across the country? Would you say in the sort of flavour or status uh, of the training there? programs or the undergraduate programs? The, the training, the the Deakin site. Yeah, there are, there are um, there are differences. Uh, some are much more um, sort of reflective and um, psycho uh, psycho education, psycho dynamic uh, right, orientation. Okay. Um, there are standards across the country, though, so um, we all have to teach uh, CBT to proficiency at least, oh, okay. and then usually one other evidence based. Right. Um, is that governed by the BPS or? Uh, that is, uh, it's governed by. Good question, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> uh, it is. Uh, it is BPS criteria. Yes, it's BPS criteria, um, but the um, CBT is the most evidence um, ther evidence based okay. therapy that we have. Um, and of course is used mostly in services. So where you start to see differences between programmes is um, in that other one right, that okay. they add on. Um, we actually are, are kind of booking the trend slightly and we actually offer a selection for that other one that trainees can choose. Oh, okay. Uh, so we run different uh, different aspects each, each year right. uh, depending on what's offered. So we offer kind of third wave behavioural stuff, systemic uh, practice okay. and, and so on where some programs will just do cbt oh, and right. just so, something else so people i think that leads clearinghouse website's the best place isn't it to find the list of providers and absolutely yeah so you'd find our web page, uh, web page on there um it gives a kind of rough flavor for the programs but there's also a um, handbook called the alternative handbook okay. which is published by the bps and this is the views of trainees currently oh, in training okay. or just left training and they give sort of qualitative feedback about their experiences on the different programs. Right, okay. So you can get a, a, a different kind of feel. flavor of the, the Exactly. Programs. And I think from that, and um, what our trainees would say is, is, is Trent is uh, quite demanding, um, but very supportive. And right. we're quite research focused because okay. um, we, we see great value in, in evidence based practice. Yeah, so. yeah. So this question now, it's a little bit sort of delicate, and I don't know what you think. So when I write a reference for somebody, mm. The reference form that comes through asks me to kind of rank the student yeah. according to like whether they're in the top 5% of people I've ever given a reference for and, yes. and so forth. So I know that to kind of get through to applying, you really do need a minimum of a 2-1, don't you, or a first? Um, uh, we will take a 2-2 two -two if okay. it's supported by a master's. Um, there was actually some uh, some talk about just dropping the need for the masters because, as I'm sure you're aware, that the, there's kind of very low uptake amongst the kind of populations we'd like to recruit more of into clinical psychology. Okay. Because these days it's really can you take on more debt? Are you in a position yeah, to take on more yeah. debt? Uh, and of course, not everyone can. Um, so you that's... meant debt if they did the masters? Exactly, exactly, right. yeah. Um, so so some programs will um, will demand a two one 
regardless of a master's, but we will accept a tutu with a master's. Right, okay. And actually, looking at our trainees, there's, there's not um, a great deal of difference in outcomes between right. the groups that we take. But someone with a 2-1, they could be somebody <laughs> who's just squeaked into mm. the 2-1, you know, 61% average or something, yeah. versus someone who's just narrowly missed at the other end. Yeah. It's quite a big category, isn't it? And, it's a huge category, and uh, this is why the references are quite important to us. So we do pay quite a lot of attention to them. Right. They're not necessarily the the best formatted in terms of what we're looking for, but we are really looking for: has this person you've asked for a reference? Do they see some potential in right. you as a clinical psychologist? Um, and it's just one thing we look at. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's I suppose, in a way, <clears throat> setting that writing test levels the playing field, doesn't exactly. it? It doesn't yeah. matter where you've undergraduate you exactly institute you've been to and, or... exactly and this is this is why we wanted to do that because actually we find no difference between the university that you went to and your outcomes at the end right okay uh, we have looked at those kind of things uh, for improving access uh, and so on great so um you obviously enjoy the work yes you obviously want to promote clinical psychology as a career absolutely route. absolutely i think it's uh, very rewarding um it's uh still has um good status in the health service i think in terms of psychologists leading and developing services right, okay. so if mental health is, is uh, something you're interested in um i would definitely recommend clinical psychology of course it's not the only route into um mental health um yeah. working with individuals yeah we're gonna i think i'm gonna do some separate recordings okay on some different ways of Absolutely. Work in mental health. Yeah. And I, th I think it's important to note that the, the fundamental difference with clinical psychology is that research element. Right. Okay. And if you're not attracted to research, and not everyone is, if you're much more just sitting with people and, and understand their problems, um, there are other routes. Yeah, clinical yeah. psychology is very much about right. the scientist That's practitioner That's really worth role. knowing. I mean, there are some other routes where you could specialise in mental health. And I hope to be, as I said, talk about this in a separate recording, like occupational mm. therapy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and that that still would consider itself to be like an evidence based. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, profession. Yes. But it it lack, it's not a doctoral level research program, if you sort of it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So so the um, clinical psychologist should be uh, contributing to the evidence base as well as working right, in an evidence based okay. way. Uh, other professions will uh, generally just work in an evidence-based way. Right, okay. Some will do research, right. but it's not as built into the uh, career structure as, yeah, as yeah. it is in clinical psychology, mostly. I think that's no... It's no bad thing if someone listening to this thinks, do you know, to be honest, the re I don't want to do that research. No, absolutely <laughs> you know, not. It's, absolutely like, not. Uh, it's not for everyone. No, no. But... And it, it, you know, there are um, you know, different routes to, to, to working with people in distress, um, yeah, and yeah. we certainly need lots and lots of those people right um the research is, is just a component of this particular this job role right well dave thanks for all that you've done over the years <laughs> <laughs> for supporting people in psychological distress no as worries. well as generating um, and supporting the next generation of uh psychologists no worries at all and i probably should add you know we're very keen to talk to people who are interested okay um from lincoln and the surrounding area we do provide kind of workshops and you know we're available via email to, right, to okay. have a chat prior to people apply so we'll we'll make touch. sure your email's listed <laughs> <laughs> maybe not no we maybe, will well that could be the intuition test yeah yeah content, so if they, they can, can find me <laughs> track you down all right thanks dave uh thanks everyone you've been listening to talking jobs with rachel bromnick thank you everyone Bye.